Many solar companies out there make the process seem really hard and complex to install the system. Well, it's not. If you are a DIYer, you can totally handle this project. After doing some research, I came across a company called Solar Wholesale out of Salt Lake City. They provide all the planning, equipment needed, and even down to the hardware for the conduit. And in this video, I'll show you how to install a system. Even better, I'll be the only one on the roof doing it. My name is Scott, and this is my DIY solar project video on how to install your DIY panel system. If you decide that you want to do your own system, click the link in the description below for more information. And if you tell them about this video, you receive a $250 discount. Also, for all those wonderful people out there that have served in the military, you can also receive an additional $250 discount. If you don't want to do the installation yourself, and most areas may have a local installer to help you, and you still save money over the big guys. While making this video, I found out there was so much content that didn't make sense to include in this video. I'll be making a follow-up videos on why I went with a DIY solar company and lessons learned in the process. In the kit, they give you your own personal plan set, which is specifically for your job. Also, these are the plans that you will use to submit for your permit for the county city you live in, which is great because all I had to do for my permit was fill out one sheet and forward the plan set. It will give the arrangement on how your panels will lay and the measurements. Once I got up on the roof, I found out I could add two more panels by putting them in landscape. I did this because the roof was south facing. It will have the schematic for the electrical hookup. It will show which inverters will go with each panel in that array. The kit that Solar Wholesale provides will have all the material needed for the project. I got my anchor here, and it, which are going to bolt to the peak, one end and the other. So I have the anchor over there, and I got my anchor over there. My pulley, them so I can go across like this. Then my rope grab. I went and made me a platform to fit on the peak so I can put my charger, my equipment. All right, I'm gonna find the top left corner of my first row of my panels. So I'm gonna come down from the top. I'm gonna come about my first row is gonna be about 12 inches. Then I'm coming five inches from the edge. After you have marked off where the top of the panel goes, you will need to come down 9 or 15 inches, depending on which way the panels are mounting. The reason for this is because of the offset of the bolt to the rail clamp. And I'm going to go over the same side over there. I'm going to go ahead and snap my line. All right, I got my first line snapped. That's going to be my first rail. And I know it's more than 5 inches, then I came trying to find my stud. And you can hear that thud and louder. So that's where gonna be my first bracket. You can tell, especially when you hit a stud, it keeps it grab. And a good idea, you can leave that right in there. We can hook our tape on. And you're gonna mark off every four feet or what the plan set has provided you. Don't forget on your next rail, Go off one joist so you can offset your mounts. On this step, we're gonna install our first bracket. This is the flashing. We stick a bit of silicone in the hole. And then we'll go ahead and stick it halfway around. You got your lag bolt, your bracket. Yeah, nice and tight. All right, it's been a few hours. I got all my mounts put up. All right, let's give this a shot. It's a little difficult holding on a camera. So I installed this rail already. If 
put this one in. So, this little bracket right here, the back side's out of the old spring, and then this is separate. So, it, it got a little bit of room to give when you snap it in. Put in a little angle, and then you push down. Another reason why I use solar wholesale is because they use the snapper rack system. And I found that very easy to assemble and to make adjustments when I needed. And here's your rail splice to connect the rails together. Once I got all the rails in place, I used a rail as my straight edge, so the end of the rows can be the same height. I tightened those mounts down. After that, I used a string line to straighten the rest of the rail. After setting your edges for your rails using your straight edge, you get the middle lined up. I use a two by four, sit on one end and then the other. Pull the string nice and tight. And as you go along, take another cut two by four. As you see here, there is a gap. The rail is too low. Continue this at each mount. Here's an example of a rail after being straightened by a string line. And another reason why I pick solar wholesale is because they use microinverters. And some of the microinverters have four panels per one. So that's less inverters to put up, less things to mount, which to me makes it easy. Just make sure when mounting the inverter that the slot apart here is around the shaft of the bolt. Some electrical work for this. Oh, I'm gonna give you a part of it. These are the connectors they give you. And then just daisy chain all together, one after another. But right now I'm gonna show you the ends that are short, you cut the dead ends. You use this little device to cap it off. Cut off about maybe an inch or so of the outer jacket. Take this little gland, it's like a plastic gland nut. I feel it's easier. Pull out the rubber grommet. I don't know if you can be able to see, see if you can get there. You see there's little four sections. You try to get each conductor in its own little section. And you want to make sure that there's enough boot going up here. So when you tighten down the gland nut, that it squeezes down on the outer jacket and keeps it watertight. And there you go. All right, I just ran the trunk cable that I showed you finishing up the end. My first inverter, there's the end cap I put on. I ran it to this one, to that inverter. So, as I said, these are all continuous cables with connector. Right here, you just have to give you a cap, put it on there, put some tape on for extra protection. And right by that nail is where I'm going to have my roof junction box. So here's my grounding wire. Each set of rails for the panels to get one ground. Then you have the ground clamp right here that grounds the rail out. This is a roof junction box. This comes on the outside on top of the shingles. How our cables come from the on top of the roof inside the attic. For air protection, I kind of moved it over on top of a joist. So two screws to the side will hit that and give it some extra strength. I call nylon tube. This is gonna keep your watertight connection from the outside to the inside of the box. All right, got my last roof junction box hooked up. Got each circuit right here. All hooked up. Get my grounds. On this section of panels, I had to manually lift each panel up to that location. Here's a jig that I designed to help lift the panels up to the roof. I had two hooks on the top, an angle bar on the side, just in case if I had to pull the panels more parallel to the ground. The day had finally arrived that I was going to set the panels on the biggest section of my system. And yes, that is a homemade crane made out of two by fours. I designed it because of the other two sections when I had to manually carry the panels up the roof it was just too much. And especially I had 39 panels on this side. And the day before I laid the one panel down as a practice run. When choosing the location of the inverter, Try to arrange it so that it will go under the last panel that mounts for that inverter. Don't forget to write down the inverter and position number 
on what panel it's going to. You do not need the panel number. You can use the layout from your plan set. Afterwards, I made a copy in Excel for my records. Here's your mid clamp, which goes in between the panels. Once you place all your panels in your row, it's time to cut the rail down. You can have someone hold it up as you cut it, or just be careful and put it in place. So here's one of your end clamps. Goes in the end of the rail, push it back, got a little tab to pull it back, but you might have to go in here and lift it, pull this back. Here's one of your end caps. What's pretty nice about this, makes the end cleaner and better looking, covers up the bolt. And the little pain about to get in, put it on the end right here. Best to use a hammer. Traditionally, they usually have conduit coming out of the soffit down to your roof, somewhere near your meter. You have your combiner box, and then near about you have your disconnect switch, which needs to be near, near your meter. I'm not a fan of all that conduit and everything. So here's my panel. Here's my main panel, and here's a sub panel I've done in the past. I ran the cables in the wall, down into the panel, then I run conduit through the wall and out to the disconnect switch. So here's a little bit of work that I learned as a marine electrician. As you can see, I'm a little detail oriented and like things nice and neat. Here's the app that comes with the system. You get to see live power of production. Here's the current wattage we are producing, 10,400. Here is what we produce so far, almost 90 kilowatt hours. My total energy since I started, around 3,500 kilowatt hours. And here it shows you the carbon emissions you save. Today's production in a bar graph updates about every five minutes here in the morning. We had lots of sun and then some clouds in the late afternoon. Also, it shows your peak power for the day. As we can look back to the previous day, in the morning we had some clouds. About noon, we had clear skies. And finally, you would just have some not so good days with lots of clouds. Another thing cool about this app, they arrange the panels on your app just like they're on your roof. And as you go through the day, you can see how the panels are working, which ones are getting a little bit of shade, and so you can keep an eye on them and make sure they're producing. As you can see here, that's the shade from the peak of my roof as the sun comes up. And here's a little bit of shade from my neighbor's tree. this video helps you make your decision going solar and let me remind you there was only one person on that roof because it's part of the kit and railing mounting system that solar wholesale provides. The government just extended the tax credit until the end of 2022 at a 26 percent so there's a lot of money that can be saved by going solar.